This show is a proud member of Friends in Tech at friendsintech.com. Good morning, folks. This is your captain speaking. Technorama. Remember when? Tech, 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 Technorama. On this day in tech history. Tech, tech. And now, the news. Tech. What the chuck? Technorama. Welcome to Blockhead Video. I've got this shiny new par Parsec Award. Where should I put it? Over there, in the media corner. Technorama. Hold my beer and watch this. Unfasten your seatbelt to disregard all safety rules. Here your flight crew, Chuck and Craig. Welcome to Technorama Live at Dragon Con! Yay! Yay! Wow, wow, wow. This is a show that takes a lighthearted look at tech, science, sci-fi, and all things geek. If this is your first time listening to Technorama, thank you for joining us. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. We appreciate you giving us your time, your love, your money, your children. We'll take it all. I'm Chuck Tomasi, and with me is Craig Stepp. How are you, Craig? I'm a little confused because I don't need any more children. <laughs> what I'm is good, man. You? I'm actually I'm fantastic and tired and uh, still excited a little bit all at the same time. This is a little different. In the past, this is the third annual Technorama Live at Dragon Con. And in the past, we've had the Friday night 10 o'clock slot. But we've been moved to Sunday night, which gives us a little different perspective because we've got some con experience under our belts this weekend. But before we get into that, joining us, we have Clinton from Comedy Forecast. Hello. You may have heard his voice on such things as... Uh, Comedy Forecast? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Hopefully so. And he's contributed to various clips throughout the world. And uh, if you've listened to our other podcast, Interface to Face, you may also know the name and voice of Jonathan Strickland. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> A man of many words. <laughs> Is Thank that you. how we remember it? <laughs> uh, actually, d based on the way I'm dressed, I guess I should say, Good morrow to thee, lords and ladies. Yeah, yeah. Sir Lex of Luther. He's yeah. dressed as a Renaissance Lex Luther, which is I very will crush this podcast with my gauntlet fist. Well, I've got to put well, that that's on, like actually. an yeah. aluminum <laughs> can. That, that won't fist. take much. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Jonathan? I am well. I am well. Uh, it's interesting, you know, to, uh, uh, I, I, I did dress up yesterday as well, but today I was with a group of other Renaissance Festival friends who were all dressed in Renaissance Festival versions of superheroes and supervillains, and, uh, you know, individually, people just thought we were kind of interesting looking, but collectively we were a force to be reckoned with. You are dressed most impressively. Well, thank you. Thank you. No, this is actually dressed down for me, but no, no, did you did you make the whole get up? Uh, the doublet is an original. Uh, it was actually made for me by Fiona Leonard, who is a phenomenal actress and seamstress and local Atlanta person. And um, yeah, she I, I gave her an idea of what I wanted, and she took that idea and made it better, and gave you know I I'm very happy with it. And I actually do work at a renaissance festival here in Georgia in the spring, and I played a villain, and so this was the villain outfit. And, uh, now you're a super villain. I'm a super villain. <laughs> I've been promoted, which yeah, was promoted. great. I went from uh, admiral to lord. It's, it's pretty uh, pretty awesome. Is a doublet like two singlets sewed together? Uh, it's a doublet two is a, uh, yeah. It's, doublet is kind of half of a quartet, actually. Okay. I put on okay. a lot of weight last year. Does it cost a doubloon? No, it cost many doubloons. It was actually four pieces of eight. Would that be 32? Yeah. I think so. 32 pieces? Don't make me do math. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of binary, isn't it? Four pieces of eight? <laughs> anyway. Shut up. <laughs> How about you, Clinton? How are you? I don't do math. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I will screw with your head. <laughs> Stop touching me. <laughs> this is why we have no listeners. I'm doing just wonderful, uh, which is surprising being the uh, Sunday night at Dragon Con, but I'm doing very good. I've been having a great time this weekend, doing all sorts of things, being in the parade, uh, Parsec Awards, uh, dressing up, almost dressing up better than George Robb, which I think was really an amazing thing. Yep. Um, I know, shock of shocks. Um, yeah, but, but you needed red socks, Clinton. I know, well, I can't, you can't do everything. No. Uh, but uh, and, and just did my live show a couple of hours ago, and uh, so uh, 
they're having a wonderful time here this year. It is a wonderful time. It just seems to be getting better and better and better. And, and you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, speaking of which, let's talk about the parade for a minute. Now, because Clinton said he walked around with us. So um, we actually ended up, we were dressed up as men in black this year. Yeah, we did last like year too, last year. but this year we added some accessories to mm -hmm. the, including our now infamous worm dude up here. <laughs> who's wearing a, who's wearing a chain hat now, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we ended up, when we got in the parade, we went uh, to, to um, what's the park again? The um, Wood Woodruff, Woodruff Park. Yeah, Woodruff Park. And we met up with the other men in black people that were here. We've seen pictures of them in Flickr, and they showed up, and it was like, um, uh, I can't remember his his first name. Well, well, back up, because I signed us up for five positions, yeah. but we had three, you, me, and Clinton, and they made an entire section. Now, there's 42 sections. There's a whole section for the Harry Potter clan. There's a whole section for the Tolkien, Tolkien clan. Yeah. There's a whole section for the Star Wars people, and there's a whole section for Men in Black, and I'm going, three. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty sad section. <laughs> But it wasn't as sad as we thought because oh. we met two others there, a nice gentleman and his son, and his son looked like he could have been a mini Will Smith with the oversized silver super soaker. Yeah. And, and wait, wait, what, what did we, what we, we called him, little J, uh, lowercase, lowercase J. J. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He was cute. He was the star of the show. He even usurped the worm dude. Yeah. And uh, then we found out that this other couple around the corner had a brand new Ford Taurus, which is rumored to be the vehicle of choice in the new Men in Black 3 movie. They had it decked out with the rockets under the rocker panels and open up the trunk and there's the weaponry or what do they call it, the armory. Yeah. It, 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 I gotta say, it was a little weird how he was displaying all his weapons. It's like showing everybody, you know, not keeping anything back in case something bad happened. He's got all his weapons out there, you know. Hanging out the back seat, uh, <laughs> the back window is Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Yep. So, captured alien, I don't know. He was deporting him, that's what he kept telling everybody. Okay. I just had fun walking alongside the car with my noisy cricket aimed at Jar Jar's head and listening to the crowd go, pull the trigger! And all well, the little kids were going, no, yeah. don't shoot Jar Jar! Sadly, it's dichotomy. just, it's already too late. <laughs> yeah. The damage has been done. Yeah, Lucas pulled the trigger already. Yeah. And, uh, Craig and I were going up to the uh, crowd uh, using the neuralizers and just w walking up to people saying, there are no aliens here. You had a wonderful time at the parade. Yeah. <laughs> but what was interesting, it, it, you know, you think that you're just reusing the same line over and over, but because the crowd is so dense and so noisy, you and can long. literally walk 10 feet down yep. the road and say the exact same thing, and they all laugh again. Yeah, yeah no, that's... Uh, <laughs> I had two lines, and that was it. Yeah, you actually learned that very quickly at the, the Renaissance Festival. I mean, that's, that's what we do. You, you create two or three bits that work for you, and even though you've done it 100 times that day and it's no longer funny to you, it's hilarious to the people Spoiler you run into. Spoiler alert. It's great. <laughs> yeah. you no, we're all jaded and tired and, and bitter at the Renaissance Festival. No, 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 no. They're lovely people. Huzzah. 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 Now, there's been a lot that's been going on the last couple of weeks. We had the earthquake followed by Hurricane Irene. Was it just me, or last week was my favorite channel, the Weather Channel? Yeah. I watched yeah. more Weather Channel last weekend as this thing moved through the Carolinas and, and through Virginia and Washington and Maine and all this kind of stuff. And I, I was, first of all, I was thankful I didn't have to travel because I've been doing a number of trips out to New Jersey the last few weeks. Thank goodness I wasn't stuck in Detroit waiting for that to clear through. <laughs> but it was, it was fascinating. But we love Detroit, so. Now, Clinton, you're from the East Coast, Massachusetts. Did I you am. survive? I no, I actually died in the. Uh, it sorry was, to hear that. Tragic no. zombie uh, zombie sorry. forecast. Uh, yeah. No, actually, it was it was kind of a non-event where we were the we actually had the way we could tell. This is how my wife told that the storm was not that bad. She said, "I looked out the window at noontime during the height of at that point it was a tropical storm." And she said, and the squirrels were out looking, you know, on the ground foraging for food. And she said they weren't flying off in the breeze. So <laughs> well, that's where that flying squirrels come from. Exactly. Yeah. So they weren't doing that. So hey, everything was fine. Yeah. Hey, rookie, watch me pull a tropical storm into my head. Again. <laughs> 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 Boom! Against the side of a house. Nice. So, so we were fine. It was really, it was really much further north than us. Uh, Vermont and uh, New Hampshire hey, were. Getting what was funny was, you know, I live in South Carolina. Of course, I'm, I'm not where really near that's the coast. That's not the funny part. So. Yeah, that's not the funny part. But the funny part better. is, I kept getting people on Twitter. Hey, be safe. Don't be careful. You know, watch out for the storm. I'm like, 
you know, it was like sunny, you know. And they were telling me to yeah. go outside, you know, just uh, <laughs> yeah. walk around, have, a, have an umbrella in your hand or something We were like all that. Re- retweeting that. <laughs> yes. So I don't know what was up with that. Jonathan, where are you located? I, here in Atlanta. Um, and actually, I was supposed to fly up to New York City that weekend. Uh, I had a, a television shoot that was scheduled where I was supposed to fly up on Saturday morning, shoot on Saturday afternoon, and fly back down to Atlanta on Sunday. And uh, and halfway through last week, I, I contacted the production company and I said, uh, "Are you really sure you want to do this? Because um, you know this hurricane is is coming up pretty soon." And I was assured that that wasn't going to be a problem and that uh, that it, it, we were going to miss it entirely. And then as it got closer, they said, "Well, maybe we're going to try and you know move you up to an earlier flight on Saturday, so that way you can get in before the weather get, turns bad. And then by Sunday, maybe it'll be better, so you can fly back home. But in case it's not, mm-hmm. can we fly you back on Monday instead?" And I said, "Sure, that's fine." Um, and then as we got closer, they said, well, it looks like they're going to shut down all the bridges and tunnels, which means you could land, but you wouldn't go anywhere. And our studio is not located in Queens, so we wouldn't be able to actually get you to where you needed to be. So we're going to push that back. So, uh, yeah, the hurricane impacted my celebrity status. Hey, mm. now, it was tough. Now, if they could actually predict the weather and tell you it wouldn't have been a problem, they wouldn't be working in television to begin with. Yeah. Well, and... and <laughs> The funny thing is, is I did actually fly up to New York. I, I did that earlier this week, and uh, I asked everybody there. I said, "So, what was the hurricane like? Like, was it was it? Did you guys have really bad weather here in the city?" And uh, you know, they had taken all these precautions because earlier this year there was a big snow event in New York City, and there weren't precautions taken at that point, mm-hmm. and that the city. Uh, it, the mayor may have reacted a, uh, a little, uh, used, used caution, you know, over aired on the side of caution in order to, to uh, uh, make a good showing. Uh, although you always want to over air on the side of caution. Um, so, th- but they no, say, Jonathan yeah. Jonathan just throws caution to the wind. No, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we, should, we should explain. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we should back up. Sure. If you don't know <laughs> about Jay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Jonathan Strickland, you don't, he, he sounds like this famous guy because you had impacted his celebrity status. Yeah, you don't get rich off of being a Renaissance actor. No, no, no. No, Not I. The dream shattered. Just supplementing my income through the Renaissance. He's flying in to work the, the New York uh, Renaissance Festival for the weekend. You this are, this you was are best in my, known for? For, uh, for my writing for HowStuffWorks.com and being a uh, podcast host for Tech Stuff, The Stuff of Genius, and Stuff from the Future. Those last two are pretty new, so I keep forgetting the titles. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Tech Stuff is my main my main podcast. So, But this was related to that. And uh, yeah, everyone I met in New York said, no, no, the storm wasn't so bad. You know, it, it was like a rainy day in New York City, but apparently in upstate New York, they got a, a little bit more of the, the high mm-hmm. winds, and that's where it did some damage. But um, yeah, it ended up being mostly a non-event in New York City. Excellent. All right. I do have, I guess we could call this a quasi-interview question. We came up with it at the last minute, like most things. What is your favorite science fiction theme song of all time? Clinton. I think my favorite science fiction theme song of all time is probably the theme from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Hmm. So the one that ended up on Next, on Generation. Next Generation. Okay, As that was the for TV that. Do you know the words? <laughs> Careful, you're going to have to pay for the rights. <laughs> yeah, okay. 30 seconds is up. That's why I don't sing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I think because it, it embodies two things, and someone pointed out to me, it's a very epic theme, which is appropriate, but the second thing is it has a lot of overtones of being a sailing ship theme. Mm. And you think about it, the Enterprise is really a a metaphor of a a sailing ship, so I think it works on two levels. (laughs) Please. Yeah. (laughs) Played on the concertina, (laughs) so that just (laughs) happened. (laughs) Same Jonathan? question to me? Uh, yes. Okay, I've got a tie, really. I have a um, tie. No, I mean, there's... <laughs> I've got one right here. black tie behind me. Let me, let me oh. try that again. Bow ties are cool. There are two different themes <laughs> that I, I really enjoy, and I cannot pick between the two. Um, 
one is the uh, Battlestar Galactica theme, but not the most current one, the, the 1978 mm-hmm. Battlestar oh, Galactica. Okay. Uh, I just I love those horns. That's it's it's great. Awesome. It is yeah. awesome. I, I love that. And and um, uh, so that whenever anyone talks about Battlestar Galactica, you know, I always say, yeah, I like the one that had the real theme. Uh, although Bear McGrady's work is amazing, so I don't really mean that. But the other one that I really liked. Uh, was the Adventures of Briscoe County Junior, mm-hmm. which oh, yeah. if you you know the show didn't last that, that long, but we were that. we were very uh, happy to hear that that theme got reused over and over again as a uh, uh, part of the Olympics. Yep. If you ever watch the Olympics, every now and then you're dun 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 Wait a minute, that's the Adventures of Briscoe County. Does that mean like Bruce Campbell's He's competing in the long the jump? <laughs> yeah, I have what, a sample you know. of the BSG thing here. Oh, Is that what you're talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Richard Hatch stopped by. Richard Hatch from Battlestar Galactica, Tom yep. Zarek, <laughs> and the original Captain Apollo. And you're listening to Technorama with Chuck and Craig. Yeah, that'll get you worked up on it. Uh, yeah, cool. it's just, yeah. It's, it's always been my favorite. Well, yeah, I, I, got, I got a favorite one, Chuck. Okay. Um, Star Trek Enterprise. No. I, oh wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> no. You know, I don't think I've ever heard that all the way through. I always take the TiVo go. Whoosh. If we want to talk about science fiction shows that had uh, songs with lyrics, and I know like Star Trek had lyrics yeah, originally yeah. and everything, but uh, Greatest American Hero. Yeah, that was a good one. There you go. Believe it or not. Actually, I think not, I'm I think walking on it. air. It's all. It's all <laughs> I think um, Night Rider is probably one of my favorite yeah. ones, mm-hmm. along with the Battlestar Galactic one. Yep. That's a good one. How about you? Yeah, we got a wireless mic. Anybody got any suggestions? Oh yeah, come on. Well, yeah. you haven't told us about yours. Soupy. I haven't made up my mind. I have a vast library, <laughs> uh, but I'd have to agree. Is Star Trek themes are up there because I have a penchant for uh, classical music, and it just slides right in there. Yeah. Yeah. You have a what? Don't make it repeat it. <laughs> Please don't. It was already uncomfortable up here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Buck Rogers in the 20th century, that was a, that had lyrics too. Mm. Did that have lyrics? Yes, it All did. Right. All right, sing them. No. <laughs> <laughs> but so did the theme to Red Dwarf, which I really Yes, like. it's cold outside, there's no mm-hmm. kind of atmosphere, I'm all alone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, so Swoopy's <laughs> going back to school. She's uh, taking algebra, and what was it? Oh, well, I'm taking everything. I'm going to nursing school. Sweet. Well, why do you have to have algebra for nursing school? Because when you're as <clears throat> old as I am, any uh, science and math credits you have, they're older than six years old. And she Boy, got math changes that much in six years. It's new math, man. Oh, well, she got no, a it's professor. New, new math. <laughs> she got a professor by the name of Gandalf, and it wasn't very encouraging because on the first day he goes, "You shall not pass." That's a long way to go for that job. Wow. Joke. <laughs> wow. And you know what? That was, that he had to go so far for that joke. He actually made it to Mordor. <laughs> yeah. Lamo was one does not simply <laughs> walk into Mordor. <laughs> no, one should just take the eagle straight there and then back and you're done in one movie. As the eagle flies. Mm. <laughs> Anybody else though? That's sci-fi theme songs because there's yeah. so many to choose from. Oh, also, oh, we got one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. A real old Real 50s style uh, Fireball XL5. Ah, yes, yes. Clinton's old. <laughs> Clint can identify what? with that time frame. <laughs> da, 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 I'm going to have a look there. Fireball. Space. Ball. See? I know it. There you go. Yeah. Lost in Space. Yeah, that's a great one right there. Yeah. Favorite sci fi show, TV show. Come on, Luke. 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 Here is your father. Luke. What's your favorite, Luke? Come on. You got a theme song? Yeah. yeah. Any uh, TV shows that come to mind? No. no? Okay. When when the TV show comes on and you come running and go, oh, I love that show. No, it's on no. KVR. Uh, hey. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, I'm going to see what's in the tabloid here. Okay. Nah. You know, we've been carrying this thing around as men in black for a while. So there were, let's see, monster kraken found in Florida. As, <laughs> as opposed to the no, normal no, no, kind no, of kraken? Yeah. A, a rare 23-foot-long giant squid was found alive in the waters off South Florida Beach by three fishermen trolling for sailfish. And scientists say the real-life sea monster is the discovery of the century. Mm-hmm. Now, I want, to know, he, he, want you to know he passed by the article that says Barbie is a serial killer <laughs> to get to that story. Hey, this thing's loaded with you know, men in black stories. Boat named Titanic sinks like a rock. 
<laughs> Vampire well, facelift loose takes flash. a bite out of wrinkles. <laughs> Here we go. How old is this one? I think Gandalf came out of the woods. Uh, August Dewey moves. wins. August 1st. <laughs> a new wrinkle remover promises smooth to smooth out fine lines and creases with an injection of the patient's own blood. Nicknamed I, the Vampire Facelift, and in office procedures, the latest beauty trend to sweep the nation. Sounds wow. like a spam message. Wow. You're spamming our show, Chuck. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Security. Security. Yeah. All right. Right, yeah, that'll go in my next uh, high-tech snake oil presentation. Stunning new pet, cat dog. <laughs> it doesn't look photoshopped at all. No. I love it's that got cartoon. A basset hound head on a The basset battle. hound head is cranked at such an angle that it would just be a broken neck immediately. I, I love, love that it. cartoon, man. Cat dog. Cat, cat dog, yeah. yeah. Genius. Uh, we'll skip the ad for the bra. I'm making I'm a, my oh, trash stinky for the FBI. Yeah. Speaking of skipping the ad for the bra, I have been getting... Well, that's a great segue. Spam messages from two different bra companies sent to me, which is not helping my self-image one have you, bit. Have you seen your outfit? I know, right? <laughs> there, I am wearing a I skirt. Guess they have I am wearing a skirt. No, the genie bra and the ah bra, and I can't believe I just gave them publicity that way. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I've received multiple emails from both, and every time I do, I just think I gotta work out. This is just depressing. Yeah. It is nice to know that there are people willing to lend support, but that's not really the kind I was looking for. It's a bro. Right. It's a bro. <laughs> a it's man's a man ear. bra. Man's ear. Man's ear. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, you guys, do you, do you use Google Voice? I do not use Google Voice. Do you use Google Voice? I Jonathan? used to use Google Voice. I actually told this story before we started uh, recording. I used Google Voice for a while, and then uh, I had a prepaid phone briefly while I was between smartphones. And then uh, I got another. <laughs> jobs. Yeah. And then I got another smartphone, and then I forgot to remove the prepaid phone number from my Google Voice account. And then some poor woman who got a phone that had. You know, once they recycled the number for the prepaid phone, she had that number, which meant she started getting some of those strangest text messages she had ever seen from people who were getting increasingly angry that she wasn't responding the way I would respond. So since then, I have converted everyone back over to my actual number because I don't trust myself anymore to maintain my Google Voice account. <laughs> Craig uses Google Voice, right? I do. Yeah. All the time. I mean, I reach you 99% of the time on that anyway. Yeah, I use it all the time. It's just funny when people leave messages is that, you know, Google tries to translate them. Oh, heck yeah. Here, listen but to this. A, this. But is... it does a half good job. And, you know, all the more reason to use Google Voice is for the entertainment. <laughs> this uh, is just, oh, absolutely. Just, <laughs> this yeah. is, now, I have United Airlines, rest in, you know, God bless me, whatever you want to say. Uh, <laughs> say what you like. I'm a frequent flyer, so... I, I get these alerts to tell me my flights are on time, my flights have been delayed, and if they can't reach, they leave a voice message. Well, it's going to Google Voice. This is one of my flight alerts for tomorrow. Okay. Is the aux up, Soupy? United Express, Express underscore jet, will be departing on time at 3.14 p.m. Once again, flight 59.27 from Chicago O'Hare to Appleton, Wisconsin on September 5th will be departing on time at 3.14 p.m. Flight information is subject to change. Please check the flight information monitors at the airport. Thank you for choosing United. Goodbye. Thank you. Did that make sense to everybody? You could understand that, right? Well, apparently Google cannot. <laughs> this is how this came out. I did with the flight updates message. You know, it's like number. Yes. The nine Yorty, what is a Yorty? I don't know. Nine Yorty seven. Yeah, operated by United Express, U Express underscore chat. You'll be departing on time, S, your, your team. Yeah, once again, flight, yes, D9, Yorty, <laughs> yum. Your carpool here, you do. Yeah, Fulton. Not Appleton. Yeah, Fulton, Wisconsin. Yawn, <laughs> you September. Yes, you'll be departing on time, E.T. <laughs> Phone home. home. 
Uh, your thing. Yeah, plate information is subject to change. <laughs> What's within it? It cannot get Chicago right. Chicago O'Hare. You'd think it understand Chicago. I've had Ricardo, <laughs> her cargo. It Ricardo. doesn't understand what Chicago is. I don't know. Here, you I tell get, me. I got one for you. This is from my dad. And it says, hey, Craig, it's just me checking into Hoff. Get time. Give me a buzz. If you don't worry about it, a big deal. <laughs> Do you guys know who Marion Call is? Yes. All right, she you, did the, the music at yeah. the Parsec Awards last yep. year. Right. Awesome with that typewriter thing. So Marion Call, she has a song called It's Good to Have Jane on Your Side, which is, mm -hmm. you know, she did a Firefly uh, tribute mm -hmm. album, and that was one of the songs. Great song. Well, she held a limerick contest. And if you, uh, the winner of the limerick contest would get her voicemail, or her voice on your voicemail singing to you. Um, I won the limerick contest. I didn't intend to win. I just submitted a limerick just, just for the heck of it. Well, if you submitted it, you intended to win. Well, no, no. I, 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 I did it through a little comment section. You were supposed okay. to send an official Twitter message. Um, but Peter, I, I get this tweet that Peter Sagal had picked my, uh, my, my entry. And so the, she, she left a voicemail on my, on my phone where it's her singing, it's good to have Jane on your side. And um, here's what Google Voice thinks oh no. that song is. <laughs> uh, she started off by explaining who she was, in case I didn't know who just randomly started singing that song. <laughs> said, Hi, Jonathan. This is Mary and call it a message for you. And it goes like that. Well, it I need. He likes, <laughs> he likes to suit snap, you know, give a damn. Once you think he's been busy day, stern entrances and his nights. Jason Lansing and a half of the wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. See. Read it more in that Renaissance voice. I think it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Lansing and a half of the key again here to see. I'll happily, Katie, and you see and I need to. Braden at of into down, dad a yard, and I was his has mama side. And he's always, I mean daughter, and I have a field. It's good to have Jane on your side, but good to have day, and I knew that I. Yeah. It sounds like Shakespeare yeah. to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's much better when Marion I want that voice it. reading voicemails to me all yeah. the time. <laughs> I, could, I could have another living. Yeah. Oh. I, where's my TomTom -tom contract? Yeah. Verily, thou hast missed thy turn. <laughs> turn bout and try again. At the roundabout. Lo, go back. <laughs> thou hast reached thy destination. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He thinks I does recalculate too much. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yes, I could do it the, the Polonius way. <laughs> to expostulate where your direction should be and what duty is, why day is day, night, night, and time is time. Oh, you missed your turn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All right, next bullet after. Does anybody <laughs> listen to the International Spy Cast? Put on by the uh, International Spy Museum. Well, a lot of Steve. them do, but if they told you, you know. <laughs> yeah, Steve Morris you. turned me on to this about the time we were writing Podcasting for Dummies, and I started listening. It's very fascinating. About once a month, um, Peter, 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 what's his name? The director at the museum does most of the podcasts, and they'll talk to authors. They'll talk to ex-spy people who have been in the CIA through the Cold War and whatnot. Very, very interesting it's very, stuff. I've, I've listened to it for a long time myself. Now, I'll, I'll kill you later. Yeah. Now, recently, <laughs> one of their articles said that terrorists are using a series of code words in case their communications are intercepted. So they sound more like a normal message. To me, it sounds more like spam. <laughs> for example, if someone were arrested, they would say that they were sick. <laughs> okay, they make up some fictitious event for their attack, like saying there's an IT conference for a bombing, which you know could be either or in my case. The details of the events are all couched within the message, but it would look innocuous to an outside observer. If that's true, that gives a whole new meaning to some of the spam messages I get. Like, here's one for example. I think this is some sort of assassination attempt or something. Dear Chuck Tomazawi. <laughs> 
Off to a great start. Yeah. This is a reminder to let you know that the 12th Annual IT Security Conference is just around the corner on November 1st, 2011 at the Grand Hyatt in New York. <laughs> We're excited to announce our keynote speaker, idealist and capitalist, Dr. Drake R. Montclair. So now we know where the event is and who they're after, I think. That's likely a code name. The Grand Hyatt is a lovely, has a lovely observation deck in the atrium which observes guests. Okay, that doesn't sound too suspicious <laughs> like a sniper location, does it? Yeah. Please register at our website, http colon slash slash itjihad.com. <laughs> what? Slash register. Space is limited, so don't delay. Itjihad? Yeah, the website should be a clue, right? Yeah. Register before October 1st and get our early bird pricing special. So, you know, not sure what that is, but it's nice to know they're trying to save me money. I think this just means you're old if it's an early bird special. That's all. <laughs> Whatever it is, I want to sign up soon. Don't forget to bring your gear, especially your laptops, Wi-Fi routers, and Bluetooth accessories. I can only imagine what that's supposed to be. Reserve your room at the Grand Hyatt and use the promo code INFIDEL1 <laughs> Wow, and save 20%. Well, that was nice of them to try and save me money. We look forward to seeing you there. Conference Director Jerry Smith. Translation, Jerry Smith will come after you and your family if you're not there. Wow. With all your equipment. So I think that's brilliant, but I have two questions. One, why are these coming to me? Two, how do these terrorists keep these from ending up in their spam mailbox? Yeah. I think they should use better passwords than INFIDEL1. You mm -hmm. will never read your spam the same way again. Based on that, you have just convinced me that the Consumer Electronics Show is the most dangerous place <laughs> on earth. <laughs> I, I kid you not, by the time, I mean, I'm already getting spam for next year's CES, which is January. I mean, that's months and months away. I have already, yeah. So I fear for my life now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We're just looking out for you, man. Oh, yeah. Check out exciting. the Viagra ads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I right. think those are on the up and up. <laughs> oh. No pun intended. Um, yum, yum. Oh, someone's going to get shot. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's a terrible point. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. Wow. Right. I'm not doing any more. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Stop okay. being hard on Jonathan. <laughs> Thou hast so missed thy turn. <laughs> <laughs> go gotta back. Get him back. Gotta get him back. <laughs> go, go back. <laughs> there is no hope. There is no going back. There's only Speaking Zool. of hope, as in new hope, we're going to jump to a Star Wars thing. We have a uh, special for everybody in this room. Um, now, you're all familiar with Star Wars 6, right? Return of the Jedi. Yeah. You know, at the end, the Emperor is putting the lightning bolts on Luke and... Darth Vader isn't too happy about that. You just see this cold expression. Well, it's been announced recently that George Lucas is tweaking the end of that. Has anybody heard that? Not yeah. just the end of yeah. it, but several pieces okay. of the whole Several, series. yeah. Well, like, like Lucas, he just got to be Lucas, right, to get more money. So we would like to show you the original, or excuse me, the, the current the incarnation. One. Yeah. Current incarnation of the ending it's real short. Sure. No. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, that's not far off, but does it really need the no, no? I'm glad they removed the yeah, ha, ha, hooey. <laughs> <laughs> that was the part I thought was just too far. Yeah. So we hacked into Skywalker Ranch servers and discovered that George Lucas was playing with some alternate endings. Apparently, huh. hmm. James Earl Jones wasn't available, so he was trying out some he, other people. He tried out yeah. some other okay. voices okay. and, okay. and, sure. and, and endings. Money, perhaps. So yeah. this is what we found. He's got the space madness. Good God in heaven, maybe there are just so very many ways for me to say this to you. Never, not in a million years, absolutely not. No way, Jose, no chance, Lance, and yet, negatory, <laughs> mm -mm, nah, uh-uh. And of course, my own personal favorite of all time, man falling off of a cliff. No! <laughs> I can see why I scrubbed that. Do these chickens have large talons? No, 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 no,
No. 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 Yes. I am. I mean no. No. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Throw it out of there. So, you know, given the choices, I think Lucas did a pretty <laughs> good job. Uh, yeah. cool. You know, that Praise that Lucas. word has has no more meaning for me. <laughs> I just, I heard it so many, it's like a cone <laughs> now. Uh, no. And we've seen the ending of that movie about a thousand times now. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. That's right. <laughs> yeah. well, I guess I should have cut, thou hast gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, Technorama Live. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Hello. Let them know where you can find them again. Yeah. Oh, yes. You can find uh, my work at HowStuffWorks.com and Ding. the Tech Stuff Podcast. Ding. And Clinton. And you can find my work at ComedyForecast.com. This has been Technorama Live. We in hope. We, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Inaudible.com was your yeah, sponsor? Yeah. Inaudibleaudio.com. At, at DagronCon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At, at ComicCon. That's your spelling. Uh, yeah. DagonCon. It's a Lovecraft thing. It's absolutely terrifying, and you lose your mind by the end of the weekend. <laughs> And thank you, everybody in the audience, for showing up. Yay! You, 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 you! And I hope everybody joins me in telling your friend about Technorama. And as always, a binary high five. One, one zero, one. one. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Yay!